Hey photographers, I am so excited because I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes on a real elopement that I just shot this past weekend at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. This is one of my favorite places to do elopements. One, because it's gorgeous. If you haven't seen what the Salt Flats look like, it's basically this vast plain of just nothing but salt desert, <laughs> which sounds kind of weird. It doesn't sound like the most romantic place or doesn't sound like a place that you would get married at but it's beautiful it's absolutely gorgeous it's in utah so it has pretty good weather there's gorgeous purple mountains in the background and i don't know it's just something about it is so serene and it's so quiet once you actually get there um, the lighting is always really good because you have the salt the white salt reflecting the light back onto the couple's faces um, which is always nice and also it's just one of the most it's probably the best minimal places, as far as landscape goes, as you can get because it's just like white sky and that's it. One thing that's really cool too is if you go after it rains and it's flooded, it almost casts like a mirror-like effect on the ground from what the sky is producing. So it makes it almost look like you're walking on glass and it's just absolutely romantic. So. Um, with that being said, I am so excited to show you behind the scenes and kind of talk about my workflow with this couple, how I got this couple, how we crafted this amazing elopement um, from the couple's standpoint of what they wanted to my creative mind of what I can offer and what I think would be good for them and everything in between. So let's get started. So to start off, we're gonna rewind back about eight months ago when the couple first reached out to me on Instagram. I had did a styled shoot with a couple at the Salt Flats because again, if you watch my first video on how I got started, it's all about curating what you wanna get back in return. So I did this styled shoot a couple years ago actually with this couple where we went out we got them a wedding attire and we had a really great time shooting. And from that, I've actually had a couple elopements book me from just that shoot. So good, good marketing tactic. Again, if you, if you want something, you gotta put it out there and, and produce it. So this couple reached out to me. They already knew where they wanted to go. Some couples have an idea of where they wanna go, at least a general region, but this couple was like, nope, we want the salt flats. We know what we want. We, we uh, wanna book you because uh, we know that you're gonna produce uh, amazing work with that location. So that's what this couple did. Uh, Kayla and Will reached out to me about eight months ago. We kind of talked back and forth about their plans and typically once we already have a location in mind, especially as simple as that, uh, I'm not gonna be discussing the timeline with them until about two to three months prior. But in this scenario, I reached out to her a little bit sooner than that and I said, hey, I had this idea. Um, since we're gonna be going to the Salt Flats, if you plan on doing a dinner with your guests because they plan on having like eight or nine people there, then I think that a twinkle tent or something like that would be really, really special in this location. And funny enough, she already was gonna email me and say, hey, I have some inspiration of doing a twinkle tent in the Salt Flats. So this was like fate that we were gonna do something like this, which was really cool. So I'm so happy this couple was on board with something like that to make their dinner special and uh, the video and the footage came out really, really nicely on this one. So that's what we did. So part of my services is to help a couple find local vendors for their elopement. As wedding professionals and as wedding photographers, we know a bunch of people in the industry or we know how to access the good ones and get in contact with them. So that's one thing that I do. I make sure that I find a couple of vendors and I provide them the contact information for that so they can make arrangements. It's a lot easier than for me to become a wedding planner and to be that middle person because there's a lot of back and forth that I just don't have time for it. Or I think it's a lot more efficient to have a couple contact the vendor, tell them exactly what they want, get the payment process started with them, contract signed, all that kind of stuff. I leave it to the couple. So I find the vendors 
I give them suggestions and then from there the couples reach out to them. So this couple reached out to this company called Moonlight Utah. They're an amazing company local to Salt Lake City and they provide twinkle tents. So they had that figured out. What we had the company do is since they've done events over there, we had them pick the location, the general area of where they're gonna be. And we met the company out there after they set up the Twinkle Tent for them. So this couple rented the table, chairs, and decor from Diamond Rentals, and uh, also an amazing company in Utah. And they rented the equipment, they put it in a U-Haul, and we set it up with the couple and the guests under the twinkle tent, which turned out to be amazing. So normally when couples come up and they want to elope, they have a general idea of what the location is. I ask them, okay, what do you want to do? What sort of your overall vision for it? What do you have planned so far? Even if it's close to nothing planned or an idea, then just let me know and from there I can kind of run with it. I think as creatives and as wedding professionals, we know what's in the industry, we know what's gonna look good, we know what's gonna be best to service our clients. So I think it's kind of up to us to really give ideas to these couples of what's possible, especially elopements. Because you don't have the safety net of a venue like a tr traditional wedding of, hey, here's the locations, here's the shooting areas, here's where you're gonna have dinner, here's where you're gonna do, to do bride and groom portraits. You don't really have any of that, it's just, the couple and your creativity from there. So give yourself the freedom to really come up with ideas, to think about what would be really cool for this couple, what's going to give them an amazing experience, what are they comfortable with, what creativity can you pull from your own mind to suggest to them and say, hey, this is what, this is what's possible, this is what you can do. So a lot of couples, when they come up to you and they want to elope and they want something really special, they look to you to be the subject matter expert and say, hey, what, what's possible? What, what can I do? Here's my idea. I want to get married in the Salt Flats and I want to have dinner with my family and my guests. What, what can I do? So from there, that's where I said, hey, I think this would be a really, really cool idea for you and I think you should check it out. And luckily, Kayla and Will were like all for it. So from there, the couple is working with the rental company, they're working with the Twinkle Tent company, they're figuring everything out. And that, during that duration of that time, I'm building a timeline for that couple. So I'm figuring out what they wanna do during that day. And this couple, they wanted to do their first look, their vows, their ceremony, everything at the Salt Flats. So then from there, I start building the timeline. And I'll, I'll probably make a video on how to make timelines a little bit more intricate in another video. but. Quick recap, I first start with the ceremony time and the, lo the location. Luckily with the salt flats, th that's all there is. It's just the salt flats, so it's pretty easy. But from there, I knew I wanted a sunset ceremony where it's probably like an hour or so um, before sunset. And then from there, I work outside of that. So I'll start with the ceremony. What are we doing? Okay, we're having dinner afterwards. That'll probably be like a couple hours afterwards. That way I have enough time for the ceremony for family photos, for bride and groom portraits, and enough light to get some of that twinkle tent on that, on that dinner set up. And then before that, okay, how long does it take to get the salt flats? It's about an hour and a half from Salt Lake City, so I map that out. And then how long is getting ready gonna take? If they're doing detail shots, if I'm moving different directions, or if I'm going to different places for getting ready shots, I need to make sure I'm kind of building outwards of that. So start with your ceremony time and location, and then build out from there. That's gonna be the easiest way to make sure that you have enough time for everything, enough light for everything, and you can tell the couple, hey, be ready by this time. This is what time that we're leaving for the salt flats. This is what time we're doing dinner, the ceremony, first look, everything. So yeah, you'll be set. After we have the timeline set and everything is confirmed with the vendors and they have everything that they need, from there I just check in on the couple. I will call them maybe about a few weeks beforehand to kind of go over the timeline, answer any questions that they may have. At this time, usually they don't have very much questions. They're just excited and they're just ready to go. And if you prepped enough, then that's kind of the goal is to make sure that everything goes smoothly. <laughs> then from there, about a week or so beforehand, I'll finalize the timeline with them, make sure that nothing changed between that phone call and a week prior to the event. And also checks in on the couple as well, just to say, hey, just to let you know I'm here, here's a point of contact. That's gonna be the biggest selling point, I think, with, with couples. 
Another thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you are proactive in communication with your couple. That's going to build an immense amount of trust between your couple and you and they're going to know that you are the person taking care of them and that you are the expert and that they can trust you as a professional, which is what you want. Because the day of, you don't want any question about your authority, about your, your ability to operate this whole thing. Everyone should look at you and say, hey, what's next? We completely trust you. And a good way of doing that is by having the couple trust you. So when they're talking to any guests that they bring, they're like, hey, you know what, Nick's got me. He has it under control. Any questions that you have pertaining to the workflow, how things run, go to him. So with that being said, now we have the timeline, all the vendors are confirmed, the couples knows what's happening, what's going on, where the guests know where to be and at what time and everything should be set in motion for you to have a great elopement day. So now I'm gonna take you behind the scenes on this elopement and uh, you get to see how it all played out. First thing I always like to do before I get anywhere is I check in with a couple the day beforehand. I send them a text or an email and just say, hey, I arrived at this location or you know, I landed or whatever it is and I can't wait to meet you. I'm so excited. I will be at this hotel, your Airbnb, your house, whatever, wherever they're at at this time. Again, that just puts in their mind that, hey, I don't have to worry about anything because at this point, they have a lot of stuff that they're going through. If you haven't been married before or if you haven't been in the wedding industry for very long, there's a lot of stuff that's happening. The couple wants to make sure that they're okay, getting you know their stuff set up, if they have any guests, if they're flying somewhere, if they're checking in somewhere. All they wanna know is just to make sure that everything is, is okay. So by you sending that quick little text of saying, hey, I'm so excited to see you tomorrow, I'll see you at this time, that's all you need. Even if they don't reply, they know that you're gonna be there at a certain time and they can get, you know, that other mind and have a peace of mind. So when I arrive, that's usually when I do the detail shots. That's kind of like the slow part of the day. And I'll collect any rings that they have, invitations, any accessories, their shoes, all that kind of stuff. I do all that stuff first. It just kind of puts my presence there that I'm there. I can answer any last minute questions from the couple or any guests that they have as I'm kind of working that. And then from there, that's when I'll start doing the getting ready photos. After the getting ready photos, then we headed on out to the Salt Flats. Again, it was a, about an hour and a half drive from Salt Lake to the Salt Flats. And it's such a pretty drive because you're driving by snow covered mountain tops. You're driving by the Salt Lake. It is such a cool drive and about an hour and a half away from Salt Lake City into the abyss, into, <laughs> into the, 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 the desert, the vast desert that is the Salt Flats. So as we got there, I met up with the groom who was doing some of the setup with the table and the chair setup. Um, we got him ready and then we were gonna do the first look. And we did the first look out with them. This couple wanted to do their vows uh, privately, just them two, which I would say is a good suggestion to make to the couple. An elopement already is intimate enough, but if they wanna be super, super private and you can kind of sense that they are a little bit more shy or a little bit more private, then definitely suggest them exchanging their vows privately during the first look. The first look is always a very emotional and a very monumental part of the day because that's the time the couple really, I think it really hits them that they're getting married that day and that this is happening. They get to see each other in their wedding attire for the first time and they're gonna be like, wow, like we're doing this, we're, we're getting married. <laughs> so. This, this couple was really excited to do the first look and when I tell you that the groom and the bride broke down, it was unbelievable and it was amazing and it's so cool to see something like that because I think in traditional weddings, there's a little bit of a wall there, you know, like some people might still get a little bit emotional then, but I think when it's just the couple or just like a small group of number of people, they're close friends and family, and they do the first look and their vows and everything like that. It's just, they're not projecting their love and their vows to everyone, it's just them talking to each other. And they're saying, hey, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, to do this with you, this thing called life with you for the rest of our lives. So I think when there's an elopement and in a small intimate setting, there's, there's no walls there. It's just the couple talking to each other. So I think it's something really cool. And that's, that's definitely what happened with this, with this elopement that um, 
the groom and the bride really kind of got emotional and got me a little emotional too. I'm like, all right, keep, keep shooting this, keep filming. One thing I like to do before our first look is I like to prep the couple before we actually do the first look. So before she taps him on the shoulder and he turns around and, and they get to see each other, I tell them, okay, slow down, take a couple deep breaths, and I say, hey, think about these things. Think about the first time that you met this person. Think about the first time that you fell in love, the first time you said I love you. Think about any hard times or the best of times with this couple because I want to build the anticipation up. I don't want the couple just to see each other and be like, okay, cool, like, great. And some couples may do that. But if you really make this an experience for them and you really make sure that, that you, you build this up and you say, hey, this is the first time you guys are seeing each other on your wedding day and your wedding attire. This is before everything happens. This is, it, it's a big moment. Close your eyes. Remember the first time you guys said I love you. Remember the first time Ryan proposed and you guys chose Zion. Think about your future. What does that look like to you? When I tell Think about everything. Think about your relationship. Think about how good it feels to say sweet nothings in the morning, you know, when you're sleeping in on a Saturday morning. Or, or think about the cute little things that him or her does to you, um, like lays out your clothes or packs your lunch or brings you coffee without you even asking. Think about all that stuff to really just build that emotion and build that energy up. So when they look at each other, they're like, wow, like, yes, like we're doing this. They're amped up, they're ready to go. Emotions are flying and you get some really, really cool photos. After the first look, we went back to the ceremony site. And what's one awesome thing about being an elopement photographer and shooting outside is that you get to have control over where are you doing it? What, what the light looks like? And that's what makes them for really good photos. Usually with traditional weddings and wedding venues, you're, you're at the mercy of where the ceremony's at. And sometimes it's in harsh light. At least it is in Arizona. That's everywhere here. But over there, you get to position them. So I was able to position them to have the beautiful mountains in the background on the salt flats um, with some amazing lighting on them for their actual ceremony. And what a ceremony it was. It was nice and easy. Um, they had an officiant there and usually i officiate my couples but sometimes it's nice when i a couple hires an officiant to do everything so that i can just focus on taking photos <laughs> but in another video i'll talk about how i officiate and shoot the ceremony at the same time which is kind of fun it was a gorgeous ceremony i got to fly my drone which i never get to do because again i'm officiating the wedding as i'm taking photos of it but i got to fly my drone and get some really really cool wide shots of the ceremony as it's happening for just this video for this right here so i can show you guys what it's like and how beautiful it was after the ceremony we go right into family photos because i want to make sure we get that at the optimal lighting i get all the family together What's one thing that I like to do is I get to just quickly learn who everyone is. I section them off between the couple, like who the bride family is and the groom family is. I know who they are, so then I know what kind of photos they need to get. I need to get the parents together, all the parents together, I need to get all the siblings together, do individuals with everyone, and different combinations in between, stuff that I learned throughout doing weddings. So. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm pretty quick with getting all that stuff done. If you're not quick or if you're not that confident yet with how to direct family photos, ask them for a list of them before you get to the wedding, before you get to the alone. Ask them who do you want photos with, what different combinations you have to make sure that you get everything that you need. After we got done with family photos, then we moved into the bride and groom photos, which was unbelievable. Again, I got to fly my drone. I got to do some really, really cool stuff. I got to pose the couple. The couple was just having such a great time. It was really, really windy, which you're gonna see in the clips here. But it just made the dress fly and it, was, it looked really good. Um, it made the ribbons on the, on the bouquet kind of go out, which is really cool. Again, I love shooting in the salt flats. It's so minimal, but yet you can do so many different things. So the couple was having a really good time. Me and the videographer having a really good time. It just was an all around good day. It was pretty windy that day. So we had to put the glasses from the tablescape down just so they wouldn't fall over and break. But because it was windy, it got a little bit, a little bit chilly. Luckily I brought my jacket with me and the, and the couple had some nice jackets too. Um, but overall it was a really, really, really great day. And finally we got to sit down under the twinkle tent and have an amazing dinner. And oh my gosh, when I tell you guys that this food was amazing, 
it was like 10 times more than I can describe. It was delicious. And I, it's probably because we spent all day shooting and running around. So finally getting to sit down and eat was just awesome. But I'm very fortunate that my couples like to include me into their dinner with their guests. So, um, this couple invited me to sit down with them. We got to talk about the day, talk about just life under the twinkle tents, which just kind of glistened and we were just in the middle of nowhere. So I'll show a drone shot of, of just where we were. We were literally like, we just drove 10 or 12 minutes just out in the, the salt flats desert and then just drove and drove and drove until we found that spot. And we got to just hang out and have the place to ourselves. It was a little windy, it was a little cold, but it doesn't matter because it just was an amazing day. We got some amazing footage. The couple had a great time. We cut the cake and that was it. That was basically the whole elopement. So I like to deliver my galleries pretty soon after the elopement. I deliver my gallery two days after their elopement and I'll talk about it in a different video on how I streamline that to make sure I can deliver it as soon as possible. You definitely don't need to, that's definitely overkill, but I like to just get it out there. The couple's on a high from that day, I'm on the high from that day, so I like to edit it as soon as possible so I can deliver it, they can be happy with it, and that just makes it for some really, really good reviews. So. If you have any questions on this video of how anything worked, of how the day went, let me know in the comments. I will leave a link for you guys for the gallery below so you guys can check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video and for coming along with me behind the scenes on this amazing elopement. I'm so glad you guys are able to see behind the scenes and kind of learn how I operate, how the workflow goes. If you have any questions, leave it below in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.